Okay, we are going to start. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. And thank you in particular for Professor Hideki Sato for discussing with us today his last book, which is The Dynamics of Banking Supervision, Advances in Europe and Global Challenges, which was published in 2023, as it has been included in the information in the event for those that have registered to the event and also those that will be listening to the recording after the event. I'm Professor Rosa Lastra. I'm the Sir John Lubbock Chair in Banking Law at the Center for Commercial Studies of Queen Mary University of London. And I am the current director of the London Financial Regulation Seminar. My deputy director, Dr. Daniel Dalvia, is with the discussant for the session today. He is a lecturer in banking and finance, also at CCLS, Queen Mary University of London, and I will introduce him further when I give him the floor after our discussion. This is part of the London Financial Regulation Seminar, which, as many of you know, if you have signed for the event or will listen to the recording, is an intercollegiate and interdisciplinary group of experts, which is currently led by CCLS and our Institute of Banking and Finance, and we bring together experts in financial regulation from a variety of subjects, law, economics, finance, history, business, accounting, as well as the practice in, in the professions, both in the legal profession, accounting profession, finance and banking, and international financial institutions. So a very dispersed and diverse audience. We also have our students and alumni invited to the event. So Professor Hideki Sato will talk today on the historical aspects on the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision, which was set up in 1974 and started functioning in 1975, and the Bank of England, which acquired formal supervisory powers through the Banking Act of 1979, even though it had um, informal supervisory powers as, as well as a role as Bankers Bank before 1979. Well, was part of the history of the Bank of England, obviously, to have a relationship, informal relationship with the commercial banking sector, as well as imposing on them informal requirements, prudential requirements like on liquidity. So he will compare the dichotomy of the supervisory methodologies. In my last minute, before I give the floor to Professor Hideki Sato, with thanks for being with us today. Let me say that he's professor of international finance and international financial history at the Faculty of Economics and Management of Kanazawa University in Japan. And he's also an associate member, as I am, of the Financial Markets Group of the London School of Economics. And I mentioned his book before, and he has also published a chapter entitled The Bank of England and the UK Banking Supervision in the mid 1970s to the early 1980s, and has recently published also a paper with Professor Charles Goodhart. So without further ado, I'm giving thanks very much for the presentation today. Uh, let me pass the floor to him. Just I will just say in terms of how the procedure is going to run this afternoon evening is that Professor Hideki Sato will talk for around 30 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes, then uh, Dr. Daniel Dalbe will make a formal commentary for five minutes, and then I will open the Q&A since I have Charles Goodhart, who is also my mentor in the audience. I will ask him to make first a comment or a question, and then I will open the, the floor for any further questions, which you can ask just by raising the hand through the Zoom feature or writing to me in the chat a question. So I will now uh, welcome our distinguished guest this evening, Professor Hideki Sato, and I will silence myself and he will share with us his uh, presentation. He has the sharing rights. So the, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much for the kind introduction, Rosa. And thank you very much for the preparation, uh, Daniel. I'm very privileged uh, to be hosted as a LSE FMG by Professor Charles Goodhart. So uh, I'd like to share my screen. So is that all right? 
Yeah, so uh, my name is Hideki Sato. I'm uh, originally from Kanazawa University, Japan. So this topic uh, is uh, on the historical aspects on the Basel Committee, especially for the in comparison with the Bank of England. And so my focus point is I dichotomy of the hardware approach and software approach. And this is my fundamental viewpoints on supervisory methodologies. So I very privileged to be uh, here with the London Financial Regulation Seminar. So uh, the outcome of the presentation is after general introduction and the focus framework banking supervision of BCBS and Bank of England and uh, relevant literature and liter research methodology and uh, the UK Banking Act 1979. This is the first enactment of the legal framework of the UK banking supervision. But uh, the important thing is uh, how to engage uh, for the Bank of England uh, for the international harmonization. This is our fifth point and sixth point. It's our initial phenomenon of the BCBS and advent of international harmonization in the mid 1970s and early 1980s. So this study aims to explore the international harmonization. And this is a keyword for me. It's a, through a lens of historical experiences, although we are in 2024, it's the 10th anniversary of the European Banking Union. Uh, however, on the long-term approach, it's very important to um, delve into detail of the origin of the international harmonization, but traced by the BCBS. So uh, how to combine the historical approach based on archival records is a myriad of records. I, this morning, I went to the Bank of England archives, so sorry, it's a lot of the a plenty of the archival records. So how to choose and how to contract uh, the historical research is very important, but not easy tasks. But on the other hand, it's a very vivid and a very important thing in the birth of BCBS. And so we are in the 50th, 50th, 50th year's anniversary this year. And there, as we said, about the European Banking Union is a three pillars and the two thirds were already implemented in 10 years accumulation. So as uh, Rosa Country intro introduced me for my publication in the French one, in the, the Bank Sous Surveillance to Une Histoire de Control Bank, Care de Puy du Disneyville Circle. But I wrote the uh, thesis about the UK banking supervision in English, uh, published in Septentrium. Another one is uh, my monograph published in the last Christmas in the uh, Dynamics of Banking Supervision Advances in Europe and Global Challenges in Japanese as well. So uh, this is include uh, Europe, not only a uh, symbol of the currency of Europe, but also the pump sterling as well. But uh, this is a uh, design of the publication in Japan. So as are uh, some relevance of my uh, monograph, there, there are three and there are four parts, the background of European banking supervision from chapter one to chapter two, including the Franco-German relationship and construction of the uh, European Banking Union as a pre uh, antecedent situation. Uh, next one is the uh, construction of dynamics of European Banking Union, especially for the viewpoints and the EBU and in line with the European Economic and Monetary Union, EMU, not only completing, but also deepening of the EMU. But another challenge is the deepening of the CMU as well. It's a totally different of the group of countries. Uh, CMU embraces 27 EU countries, but the Eurozone should be implemented as the European Banking Union. And the chapter six, uh, RRF, and the new aspect of Green Deal uh, after most of the COVID-19 as well. And last one is the global aspects of European Banking Supervision. Uh, first one is a Financial Stability Board, Next one is uh, EBA in headquarters in Paris from London, Canary Wharf to after the Brexit. So they transform from Canary Wharf to difference in Paris. Last one is a BCBS. So this is a theme. So uh, today's uh, framework is uh, after the research question and the UK Banking Act 79 and the initial phenomenon of the BCBS and advent of international harmonization, including early warning system and home host issues and soft raw methodology. Next one is the leadership, as I said. So especially for as you know, Rosa Country uh, touch upon about the ICBS 
International Conference of Banking Supervisors in 1979. 79 is a very important point for me because uh, ICBS, this is the first one implemented by, initiated by the Cook Committee. It's a Mr. Cook, uh, the Bank of England, in a very important point. This is not only G10 countries, but also open it uh, secure openness for another countries as informal approach. So uh, this background, so I have uh, this study aims to analyze the historical aspects of the BCBS, uh, but the formerly CBRSP stands for Committee on Banking Regulation and Supervisory Practices uh, until the mid-1980s. But regarding the scope of this area, after months of the ZFC 2008, uh, we oftentimes uh, it's our, uh, searching for the outcomes of the research focused on not the micro prudence, but macro prudence approach. However, British policy itself has an unambig uh, ambiguous definition. So more stated that there is no fixed meaning for it. Of course, uh, protest regulation, we have to separate uh, between the supervision and regulation. Regulation is a regulatory and the um, to set up a formulation by legal approach or software approach. But on the other hand, our supervision stem from our monitoring. So this is, a, of course, a totally different. But sometimes it should be mingled. It should be very um, ambiguous and very abstract in the sense. So British policy has become its currently an indispensable and prominent area in which the majority of central banks have a mandate in uh, such a price stability in the incremental increasing of inflationary pressure. But the important thing is how to uh, sorted out the so resolution based on the very effective supervision. So uh, today's issue is uh, in the European approach, uh, MRL or BRRD, but uh, international, this, uh, they were uh, based on the international harmonization as FSP's implementation, implementation as TLACT, stands, which stands for Total Loss Absorbing Capacity. The UK is a, um, this is a very, actually essential leader in harmonization of diverse methodologies among the European countries and non-European states, including United States, Canada, and Japan at the time of mid 1970s. However, British First Banking Act had not yet been established until 1979. This is uh, over 30 years later than French cases, such as French First Banking Act, established in 1941. This is our enact, and uh, this facts was recorded by the archives of Bank of France. So uh, we set up uh, three questions. And the first one is, what is the reason it was not provided for in such an advanced economy, in particular in the mandates of central banks around the world? Uh, this is a, a focus point for Bank of England approach. Second one is, uh, to what extent should we understand the supervisor policy of the Bank of England as it relates to innate attribute of banking supervision? What's the quintessential point of the style of Bank of England? Last one is, how has the Bank of England played a pivotal role in the harmonization of international cooperation? So as for relevant uh, previous studies in the CAVI, it's a magnificent book uh, about the records of Bank of England, uh, the, this book, uh, especially for the chapter 12, the, uh, the chapter focused on the grasping the essence of the legislative process of banking in the UK during the 1970s. And as we know about the Charles Goodhart's uh, prominent book about the history of banking, uh, about the Committee on Banking Supervision from 1974 to 1997. It's a uh, myriad of uh, topics, but he elegantly uh, wrap up and uh, sort it out a very important thing, including capital requirements, regulatory liquidity regulations, and a lot of things, including core principles. So Yago and Watanabe are also delineated about the, about the history of BCBS partially and drug as well. And James is also the very latest version of the authentic as a history of Bank of England. His attention is to eyebrows is very important point. And Kynaston is also the uh, outright the comprehensive history of banking Bank of England from 1694 to 2013. 
and Walker is uh, published in the public space uh, based on the CCLS and the Queen Mary University, explore the progress of budget process and provided insightful viewpoints related to international perspectives. So methodology of the paper is, uh, um, the paper says, this study sheds light on the UK's intrinsic approach to a statutory banking supervision. We have dichotomy between non-binding, non-statutory basis and statutory hard law and a legal you know, jurisprudential approach. So it focuses on the reason and background of the UK financial situation at that time. And the historical records of the DNA National Archives in Kew Garden, it's a Kew Garden, it's very, also very important and because the Q stick to the not only Bank of England, but also the HM Treasury approach. So uh, the target period is, as I said, uh, the, um, the UK strength is, uh, this is not only European approach, but also the G10 countries approach, including Switzerland. So uh, how was the situation of enactment and process of UK Banking Act 1979? The UK banking registration had not progressed until the late 1970s, as I said, because of non existence of tremendous banking crisis since 19th century. Of course, the uh, 19th century has several uh, significant um, financial crises at the time, but uh, um, there's not conspicuous or systemi uh, systematically or uh, this expanding situation at the time. So the secondary banking crisis occurred in the form of the crisis of French bank, not the major bank, not the significant bank, but it's a relevant with indirectly with big banks, so which intensely affected the financial system in the UK. So the Bank of England uh, exceeds the, we coined the lifeboat. This was implemented and the fragile domino effect contingency imposed on the UK authorities. So this is uh, one of the motivation for the UK system, more formalized, more systematic approach. So I think that this is a stem from the domestic pressures as well. However, so I checked about the Bank of England archive 6A225 in the published and the, uh, not unveiled, uh, but, but the internal and the document is uh, recorded in 1980s. So the UK is uh, including not available, but uh, 90, at least 80s and 1978 to 1979. It's a situation and benchmark. It's not so bad. It's a relatively good. So next to Switzerland. Okay. This is capital asset ratio. This is a rudimental of the capital ratio. So as a natural archives that Q got this, as a, until the past, it, it's, and uh, related as a situation of the Banking Act. UK was unique among major countries in having no statutory authority for the prudential supervision. But a uh, UK banking supervision was intricate. And so, as we know about the, the building societies, uh, deposit taking issues required no prior authorization before it commenced business. So uh, it necessitates uh, more formulas, not based for, and not focused on the significant or recognized banks, but the other banks is very important. So set up for the other bank supervision is the focus point. So to, uh, we call it the two-tier system of the traditional banking and uh, UK banking system. And the first one is recognized banks, including significant banks and Lloyds or um, Midlands or NatWest or Barclays as well. Another one is licensed deposit taking institutions. There are a lot of uh, such as a category of licensed deposit taking institutions. There are two tier, they are called two tier approach. But the broadly speaking, only recognized banks will in future be allowed to call themselves banks. So to wrap up, uh, to elucidate in a simple one, is the first one is domestic elements. So the UK, has uh, three elements. First one is the second banking crisis, 73, 75. And next one is white paper in 1976. This is not unveiled um, apparently about the real research and the historical research uh, because banking at 1979 is very famous, but uh, to prepare it for it, the white paper is very important. 
This is based on the one committee, namely Wilson Committee. Wilson Committee uh, surveys not only before the enactment of Banking Act 79, but also after 79. So it means the next Banking Act should be established in 1987, so revised Banking Act. So Wilson Committee's feature is not only banking, but also supervising of financial markets as well. Next pillar is European approach. EEC has uh, had uh, convened and there are a lot of meeting and there are to discuss uh, every part of it. So jumping into the European European uh, economic economic community uh, for the British in British authority in 1973, but before 73, UK has uh, emit some kind of the very informative and the critiques or some kind of the a very important point of view about their uh, meeting in the EEC. So the first banking directive, 1977, is a legal. And this is a directive, this was directive, but the, it's very important thing is this should be eliminated in discrimination of the freedom of establishment. So next one is the international approach of the Basel Committee, group to contact, it should be eliminated uh, by the Professor Charles Good hard work, the group the contact initiated by uh, leadership by the uh, Dutch authorities. And I also checked about the um, two weeks uh, two weeks ago, I went to the uh, Paris and the Bank of France and the checks of the archives. So the Paris name is a group to, not a group contact, but the group to travel. So the Paris is, uh, and it consists of the, just the six members, original members. But of course, we can separate about the European uh, group and the G10 group, but the group to contact should be the antecedents of the international harmonization and transnational harmonization. And we know about the Concord that in 1975, in, uh, February 75 is famous. And the uh, recent study is uh, um, Morgan and Hennings in 1981 is a UK scheme where in fact insured deposit against the failure of the banks that hold them. On the other hand, the German scheme do not protect deposit, but provide mutual help. And mutual, mutual scheme is a very significant point of the German safe net uh, safety network system in order to prevent failure. Of course, under the point of view, we have to Mm, delve into detail about the, what the divided line between the UK and the retail ring fence system or inverse banking system in Germany and continental Europe. So uh, jumping into the current status, uh, the, mm, how to resolve effectively is a down to us approach. It's a mixture of combining of the bailouts and bail-ins. So the, this time you yes, so the, use the yes case and last spring in the JP Morgan, is a key actor. On the other hand, the Switzerland, uh, the UBS is a merger of the Credit Suisse. Also, the respective cases, different causes, uh, scale of failing banks and the people that are significant banks had to play a uh, very important role for this resolution. So uh, back into uh, the historical approach, uh, we have to picture hold up our uh, EEC and the Basel Committee approach. So EEC has discussed a draft of banking directive uh, through the course of 1970s. So group to contact, group to travel, it's supported. But on the other hand, Basel Committee established in December 1974 and the initiative of Dutch authority as a, before the Basel Committee. So steering committee on euro currency markets is, uh, in my perception, is a antecedent bodies of the international harmonization. So it's uh, another one is uh, rising for the euro dollar currency markets for how to supervise it. It's uh, not a, it should be to converge the uh, data of the statistics in the uniform approach, but uh, not the hard work approach the time of beginning of 1970s. So another classification is our, our past banking directive in 1977, and it prohibited any discrimination against certain aspects such as nationalities regarding the establishment of provision of services. This is our European integrity, but there it should be some recognition about the two 
uh, opposite side of it. So the common principles versus impossibility for all application in practice. But the Basel Committee is an openness for the ICBS in 1979. And Mr. George Brown and Mr. Peter Cook were pioneer persons of the Basel Committee. It's a mirror of the archival records in the 90s, the July 1979. So they stick to not the maximum convergence, but the minimum convergence approach. It's a very important informal, flexible, and discretion manner to exchange ideas of member states. So in that sense, the UK's intrinsic star is a discretionary delayed about the enactment of Banking Act 1979. It's a quite essential idiosyncratic type of approach. It adopts a non-statutory approach with discretionary approach. In my perception, even though the after the enactment of 1979 Banking Act, they are eager to stick to the compatible between the software and the non-binding approach and a statutory approach. So this is O'Brien, uh, Lord O'Brien, and Lord Berry, uh, governor of the BOE 66-73, stated clearly about that um, uh, the Bank of England has for many years exercised a very effective control by informal means. So he continued, brother, um, this is a, a UK approach are uh, in effect, envy of the world. Many of our admirers and surrounding of nations uh, may well be puzzled to why at so late and now we should be needed a banking act. Uh, and some may even be appreh apprehensive. But he also uh, sticks to the make the whole banking sector flourishing effective manner. It's very important. So this is uh, another point of view about the how to combat about the BBA British Banking uh, Association or city of a mirror of private sector of city of London. So it should be a dialogue, it's very important, not only legal or apparent approach, but the, mm, in a sense of shadow or some kind of the non-binding approach based on the dial, dial, mm, conversational and colloquial communication about the, to monitor about the situation of financial statements or situation of management for also be the deep side. However, so the, before the 1979, so uh, licensing and supervision of deposit taking issues, institutions are very important point. So the, it's uh, published as a CMND in uh, August 1976. So the primary banking sector is already subject to supervision by the Bank of England. This is clearly stated. And other one is deposit taking institution, which are not at present subject to continuing supervision. And the white paper searching for the how to protect the depositors is a very important point. So it should be naturally, irrationally, necessity of formalizing by legal approach. So, um, but another one is a self-regulatory system. So regulatory system versus self-regulatory system. So it's uh, uh, it stated uh, that uh, to command more willing and effective support in this field than formal rules imposed by law. So it admits about the advantageous point about the non-binding approach, self-regulatory system. But as uh, to review about the 73, 74 experiment, and another one is intricate in the allocation of responsibility among Department of Trade, HM, Treasury and Bank of England. It is very fragmented approach. So it should be more concentrated approach when it comes to financial crisis in order to emit lifeboat. So uh, UK's authorities has not been needed to relent on their position against uh, ad adopting a state statutory framework as far and actually after the 79. And they had a credible self-disciplinary discretion at the time. So to be terse uh, from the non-statutory regulation to binding a statutory regulation with discretion, with discretion is a point. And last one is actually statutory and hard by hard binding regulation. Uh, after the, for example, the 2000 uh, FSMA 2000 or Banking Act after uh, 
21st century. So next part is a readership of the Bank of England. So how uh, does the Bank of England make a load about the banking supervision in international arena? So controlling the euro markets or and the discourses are uh, the governor uh, Richardson or and the executive director and stated about the, how to harmonize international banking activities because is a Cook ratio is very really now for based on the Peter Cook's recognition and so how to uh, set a benchmark as a capital adequacy. So uh, the Bank of England's description was advanced and opposite to the sense of harmonization of diverse methodologies of the member states' banking supervision. So in my conclusion, in the Bank of England approach is very suitable, extremely suitable for diversified, not only G10 countries, but also across the world to harmonize international communication and coordination. So in the sense of how to wrap up the feature of the UK's approach, uh, should be uh, three elements. The first one is participative, next one is flexible, and last one is forward looking. So is there some kind of explanation about it? Uh, but there, in this sense, the flexible is a very important it, because uh, it adapts to um, style of the formulation of soft legal grant work and uh, grant work through so the frequent and thorough discussions on regulatory and supervisory issues. So this is a very pertinent to the internationalization of banking activities. So as uh, Peter Cook has a readership in 1979 and ICBS was held in Washington DC and, and Sweet in 1981 and followed by Long 84 and Amsterdam eight, uh, and Tokyo and Frankfurt as well. So uh, this is our uh, mirror and there are some kind of the uh, supervision of international banking lending or uh, several kind of the classif classification of articles. And the point is it should be bold for myself. So the um, similarity is the third one is the similarities and differences in assessing capital liquidity adequacy for international banks. So I um, checked up our uh, private uh, archives as well. So they're, they're preparing for the capital adequacy before the 1980s. And the liquidity control system is also important for internal government system. So initial phenomenon of the BCBS, the advent of in, uh, international harmonization. So uh, this is our, uh, interesting point about the need for international early warning system. This should be the uh, need for early warning system. It is uh, relevant with the ex exactly preventive approach rather than exposed approach. And this is a combination between the exposed and exactly, but exactly is very important at the time, 75. So, uh, but the situation is a relative low level for the early 1980s about the situation of harmonization at the time. However, uh, supervisor authority in individual country measures and control the capital positions of their national banks in very different ways. So this is a point to uh, not, uh, not limited of the discretion and options of each member state, but the how to exchange ideas and how to make a flexible manner to adapt the uh, more effective approach of other countries. But, and the home host issue is a very blockage for the harmonization uh, because uh, sometimes there are a lot of differentiated of the banking system as a jurisprudential system between home and host authorities. That's the principal responsibility of home supervisory authorities had continued through the 1980s. Of course, there are respective and exchange information between the host and parent authorities, but sir, if we have a robust parent authorities monitoring and supervision, we can um, relatively assure the soundness of banking system in host and uh, supervised by host authorities. So this is very simple one is the solvency issue and liquidity issue. Solvency and liquidity issues are very two um, key words, but are principally in the solvency issues was supervised by home authorities. On the other hand, liquidity was uh, 
uh, holistic monitoring should be necessitated. So the host authorities are principally supervised and mandates. So uh, let me skip to the uh, subtle methodology about the, it's very important in today's world in the Borio and Toniero and the innate attribute of delegating supervisor policies in terms of registration and effectively. So in today's world, it's our BCBS has stick to the uh, international harmonization by software approach. Uh, so in that sense, the good heart perspicaciously delineated the uh, content relation between these global crises. So as uh, for example, the 1970s crisis such as uh, uh, French banks in the UK or Franklin National Bank in the United States. So uh, this is uh, less germane to the specific international issue. This is a natural issue. So I would like to conclude about the three points. So the features of the UK. So even though the to be fragmented about the, each separation of responsibility between among the Bank of England, Treasury, and Department of Trade and Industry. But the role of the Banking Act 1979 apparently shows the concentration of the Bank of England as a main responsible authority. Uh, but the, from the another pressure is European approach uh, because the, uh, the membership of the uh, 1973 is a uh, tremendous effect for the UK approach. So the, it should be very complicated for the UK decision making about the soft law approach and hard approach. And the second point is our macroeconomic situation in the inflation pressure, stagnation pressure, as a tremendous watershed uh, was coined as the 1970s in the floating system, in the freedom of movement of capital as well. In that sense, in the unstable situation and the flexible and non-binding methodology on banking supervision should work. And uh, of course, it needs a tactful or a diplomatic manner uh, to not uh, make a compulsory approach, but uh, just a nudge member states to coordinate respective banking regulations. So the last one is the capital adequacy and liquidity control and the especially for the exanti methodology, a very important point for learn from the international methodology, uh, because our, um, of course this is a brother current method regarding lean against the wind approach. It's a major policy approach, but the, in terms of ex post approach, exanti methodology is an international trend. So in that sense, so the flexible manner uh, to harmonize by exanti methodology is the key. So thank you very much. It's a, I live through a lot of bibliography and archives as well. Thank you very much. And thank you for this excellent presentation on what is a very interesting historical insight on the methodological, methodological approaches and evolution of both the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision since it was set up in 1974, which became actually a beacon of the growth of soft law. As legal scholars, we put the birth of soft law in international finance to the birth of the Basel Committee. Then we had IOSCO in 1983, Financial Stability Forum 1999, Financial Stability Board supplanting the Financial Stability Forum in 2009. And it is really um, a, a very good um, insight that you have by going back to the origins or going back to the origins of both the Basel Committee and the history of formal supervision. So, um, Daniel, I will ask you to, to just very briefly reflect for five minutes on, on, the, on, the, on the paper and the, not just the paper and the presentation, but just the underlying research, very significant research of Professor Hideki Santos. So I'll give the floor to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just prepared one single slide uh, that may be simpler in this way in the presentation. So essentially, I mean, uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, your uh, excellent presentation. I think uh, it's very interesting and this slides a little bit uh, is trying to capture uh, uh, what you were saying. So essentially, the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision uh, started in this process of 1974, as we said, now it's 50 years. 
and actually here uh, at the bottom line we see a state bank and frankly national bank that was the moment where in reality i mean we had this growing development of the basel committee on banking supervision and international standards but as also for example professor goodart was saying in some of his papers intermediation and financial markets they become international in this moment but still the control uh, monetary control and regulatory systems, they are uh, deeply national. And uh, this is uh, very true. In fact, if we see then uh, there were problems in the 90s, uh, essentially BCCI, then Bearings Bank, uh, always in London, and essentially there in BCCI is the problem of consolidated supervision, a bank that essentially is in Luxembourg based and then in London is carrying out majority of its transaction under the uh, auspices or in general supervision of the Bank of England and that is a, a big moment that uh, is opening the question what the Bank of England was doing for 19 years in that moment in, in BCCI, what was doing then with bearings and that will lead in reality to the Financial Services Authority uh, as also I mean Professor uh, Aris Chu is uh, explaining in her uh, uh, leading textbook uh, Ox Oxford University Press uh, the only problem is that of course even there, there was uh, other problems because uh, the natural uh, supervisor that should be the central bank became uh, a, a supervisor that in reality, I mean, uh, was a unique supervisor and could not uh, uh, supervise uh, banks at the same level uh, of a central bank. So in reality, I think that as also sometimes Professor Lastra is saying, uh, supervision is like a pendulum. Sometimes it's within the central bank, sometimes it goes outside the central bank, but still during the Financial Services Authority in the UK, I mean, was not a good moment because this could lead then to further crisis and then the final uh, Northern Rock crisis, I mean. And this was also the product of uh, what happened in the US with Lehman. And we can see that essentially, I mean, supervision uh, has created in all, in all these pictures. I mean, supervision, I think, is essential because the supervision has made the modern world, but at the same time, maybe it's not solving the problem. And I would like maybe to conclude with a remark that is from an economist, Keynes, uh, that he was comparing uh, capital markets to a beauty contest. So even him, he was saying uh, in uh, capital markets, uh, it's like... Uh, judges that they need to decide who is the most beautiful girl. And actually, I mean, they are just second guessing the opinion of other judges. And at the end of the day, they don't decide who is the most beautiful. At the same point, uh, investors in financial markets, they are second guessing opinions. And so they are mispricing at the end of the day, the price or uh, the value of a financial asset. So for this reason, this is the reason why supervision, I think is needed, but at the same time, uh, probably, cannot solve the final problem that rests within the subjectivity of financial markets and financial systems. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I will now open the floor to some comments and questions. And since uh, Mr. Charles Woodhart has co-authored a paper with Professor Hideki Sato and also has written extensively on the history of supervision, the history of the Basel Committee, as well as the interaction between supervision and central banking. And in his book on the evolution of central banks, even before the advent of formal supervision, he explains very uh, thoroughly how the central bank has always had an important micro role. And that sometimes, like in the case of the federal risk system, the macro monetary responsibilities were grafted onto the supervisory or micro responsibilities. But yes, uh, Professor Kidek is to you, you point to the actual history of formal supervision, of statutory supervision, and kind of the difference between supervision and regulation. So I will ask Charles to either make a comment or a question or both, and, um, and then we can have other questions from, from the audience, which you can either raise your hand or put them to me in the chat. Charles, so nice to see you. Nice to see you, Rosa, and uh, Hideki. Uh, perhaps I might make a comment. Yes, uh, One of the difficulties of doing historical research is that the world was very, very different uh, back in the 1960s and the early 1970s. When I first entered the Bank of England in 1968, the only 
uh, part of the bank, which was doing any financial supervision, uh, was the discount office and the principal of the discount office with about four assistants. Uh, it was tiny compared with the fact that the uh, sector now doing sort of uh, regulatory research is the biggest part of the Bank of England. Now, uh, the discount office actually only uh, supervised and looked after the discount market. That was why it was called the discount office and the investment banks. The smaller deposit taking institutions were effectively controlled by very hardly at all, uh, the Department of Trade and Industry. And the large London clearing banks were not thought to require uh, any regulatory control whatsoever. That was in the late 1960s. And one of the reasons for that was that there had been no crises, uh, certainly not since the 1930s. Um, and uh, at the time, there was no competition between banks. The interest rates were controlled by a combination of the Bank of England and the Treasury. What anybody could charge or could offer was actually set out and required and fixed. And insofar as bank lending to the private sector expanded any faster than was generally thought consistent with macroeconomic issues, um, uh, there were direct controls over the growth of bank lending. Um, and under those circumstances, uh, there were no crises. It was rather like, in a way, uh, the, um, uh, the banking system in the communist countries, where there are no crises, banking crises in the communist countries. And one of the reasons why crises started to develop in the 1970s uh, was that the restrictive constraints over what banks could do uh, was generally lifted. In the UK, it was lifted under competition and credit control. And one really needs to interact the discussion of the introduction of regulation and supervision uh, with the freeing up of the economic systems, and in particular, the banking and financial system from the controls that had uh, operated ever since wartime. And of course, those in charge of the system had no experience of a freely operating system. Um, and in many respects, uh, we weren't prepared uh, for what was likely uh, to come along, which I think explains one of the reasons for the relatively slow development uh, of a comprehensive regulatory and financial system. And of course, such control as were applied were often applied by uh, separate institutions from the, the central bank. For example, the FDIC in America, and as I've said, the DTI in the UK uh, was supposedly responsible for the deposit taking uh, institutions. So um, I think that the um, only sort of slightly critical comment that I would have on Hideki's otherwise um, excellent presentation is that you need to interact the discussion uh, of the development of regulatory controls with the change in the way that the macroeconomic system was managed, particularly in the banking and financial system, from initially a, a system established in wartime and maintained afterwards of direct controls over the system to one in which there was much more freedom uh, of banks to change whatever policy they want, and in particular, in the pursuit of higher profits, perhaps to undertake uh, somewhat riskier policies uh, than otherwise. So one needs to interact uh, the financial stability issues with what was happening with the broader macroeconomic scene. Thank you very much, Charles. And if I may add, before we get questions from the audience, another comment that relates one on the international 
aspects of the 1970s, the macroeconomic aspects, and the other one on the history or the parallel history of supervision in the EU, which obviously had a great influence once the United Kingdom became a, a member of the European Economic Community. And, and the, the first reflection is that the Basel Committee was set up in 1974, and it's not coincidental that it was with the collapse of the par value regime. With the collapse of the par value regime in 1973, de facto, the year in 1978, but basically there was no longer an anchor in the system, and we have from then onward flexible exchange rates. That together with increasing liberalization and the advent of the euro dollar market gave a new lease of life for the rise in cross-border international activity, which had not existed before for the reasons that Charles just mentioned, in which that other, the US is a, is a sui generis example. And we have here Joan Fungaroli from an FDIC, and maybe she wants to add something, but leaving aside the US, a very much the, the, the bank uh, supervision, certainly in continental Europe, was very heavily administrative dominated. Charles mentioned like in communist regime, and it's, and it's true. Even some of the laws, for instance, in my original home country, Spain, they, 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 the laws that regulated the banking system, they were called laws of intervention and control. So the idea was that you needed to really control the banking system. The banking business was very boring, but it was very controlled. So with the advent of the liberalization that Charles mentioned, but also the, the flexible exchange rates, we needed new anchors. So the group, the contact that was initially established was concerned, of course, what to do in the case of a crisis. We should at least exchange phone numbers. And that was the beginning of the group, the contact. And then eventually the Basel Committee, which was established, a really a group of central bankers and you're the very good species of Peter Cook, whom I had the great pleasure of getting to know and almost also being mentored by him informally when, when I, I discussed with him the early history of the of the of the of the Bas of the Basel Committee. And then the Basel Committee was set up as a committee of supervisory practices. But like you say in the book of Alexei Drac, eventually became a committee of regulation. So it is very interesting how, in fact, because of the historical circumstances, the Basel Committee actually filled a vacuum. It filled a vacuum that we needed something. And since we did not have, we could not change easily the mandate of the IMF to become an international bank regulator, because the IMF is member-oriented, country-oriented, we develop a system around soft law and soft institutions that has actually continued to grow and grow. If I can mix that, the, the, the history of the EEC kind of overlap and underlap and interacted with the history of the Basel Committee, because obviously in response to crisis and in response to the integration of the financial markets in Europe, which was given a lease of life a little bit later in 1985 with the single European Act, which was very much a UK bond project. Lord Cockfield had set up a number of measures that we needed to liberalize the banking system, and that gave life. So this interaction between the Basel Committee and what happened in, in, in the, you know, from the coming of the first banking directive to the second banking directive. If you look at the work of the Basel Committee on capital, which in the European economic community they call um own funds and eventually is these days called capital, you can see there is actually moving in parallel. Uh, before I continue to, to talk, uh, there is a question. Uh, Joan uh, Fungorari, you, you want to me to read the question or you want to ask the question yourself? Please read. So I will read the question. So the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance, Supervision, she says she doesn't have a speaking access. Um, maybe Maham, we can give her a speaking access. It will make it better. So Maham, if you're there from our events team, can you give uh, Maham, sorry, can you, you give Joanne speaking access? Um, well, while I, I wait, maybe we can have the dialogue. So the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation has backup supervision authority to supplement the primary federal regulator supervision authority of both OCC and the Fed, and to provide a second level of review and challenge and also to enhance 
crisis management preparedness for the FDIC as resolution authority. The FDIC, of course, is the oldest resolution authority, even if it was not called resolution authority, had this bank insolvency proceeding special since 1933. So her question is, are there any observed supervision practices similar to these elsewhere in history or today? So Hideki, you, you, you now have a chance to answer both, well, not just both, to, to Charles, to my, my question or comment, and also to Joanne, proper question. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Rosa Anzar. Uh, the first question, uh, Professor Charles Good, Charles comments is very uh, insightful for me about the, to the macroeconomic situation and behind the scenes is very important. So I'm searching for my, it, this is my homework and the subject for the searching for the, it's a very, uh, complicated situation of the macroeconomic situation of the 70s. So my focus point is uh, to make a profitability is very important at the time. So as uh, just good Hal said about the CCC is a very lifting of the regulation. It's very uh, uh, listener is a very loosened point about the competition and the credit control. But the uh, inflationary pressure as a maker, some pressure about the profitability to make a secure and soundness of the banking is a, it's a very strenuous, it should be necessitated the strenuous effort for banking sector to make an ample profit. So I have to delve into detail about the, to check about the, um, some of the very competitiveness of the banking sector at that time. So in the sense of, it's an oil recycling system in the in monetary policy at the time. It's a how to mingle and to cascade down for the supervisor issue. It's my subject. And the, another point is uh, Rosa uh, pointed out about the EEC's issues. It's very important about the two ramification about the dollar controlling system and another one's group to contact a system as well. So I think the, uh, I checked about the Bank of France archive. So they, uh, at the time of the late of 1960s, as an early phrase to check about the transnational exchange of ideas about the situation. So it's a, another angle is the controlling of euro dollar was is uh, motivated by the US UK initiative. So it's a very important point to, uh, to utilize the uh, a London market as a euro currency market, but what's a currency is dominated by US dollar. So this is a coincidence of the in interest of two countries. Uh, but so how to um, mix it or how to sort it out is a two ramification is a very important point. As you said, the EU dominated in the single and uh, making a single market is very important. So answer the third one is the FDIC's approach is a very important. So the my understanding is that OCC is a very uh, key actor, even though the aftermath of the global financial crisis is the F sub FC FSOC. Uh, the treasury is a very important for the to extinguish so the fire and the to application for the fire bail out approach, not the bailing approach. So I think to step back to the 1933 is our uh, since 33 is the FDIC experience, the mirrors of experiences is a very expect is very excellent in the data set. But uh, in terms of prevention, it's a FDIC should have another preemptive approach. So it's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you so much, and also thank you for sticking to the time. So we are getting to the end. You know, the the purpose of these webinars is really to to have like today. I mean, you've been wonderful to have an incisive presentation and in, an incisive discussion only in the course of one hour. But uh, we, we can spare one more minute. So let me give you a last minute and, and thank uh, Charles, thank Joanne, thank Daniel for, for, for the questions. But let me give you one minute to conclude any further thought. I know that you have other research going on. So any further thought that you want. And again, thank you very much for being with us. And once that you finish, I will not talk again so we'll then conclude the meeting. So please, last minute for you. Ah, for, for myself. So, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, I think, uh, yeah, so it, it's very, as uh, I greatly truly appreciate, cordially appreciate it, it's uh, Daniel's and the, it's a very experiment, and the experiences about the investment benchmark approach and the increasing speculation and the, it must, I stick to the banking sector, but uh, Daniel's uh, contribution is our, uh, 
the investment bank or financial markets as well. So I mm, I have to efficiently to banking supervision approach in terms of the holistic in the insurance or financial markets as well. So uh, my, uh, I thank you so much for the lots of invitation to exchange great ideas. Thank you very much, and we'll be in touch. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.